The house is growing and the house requires more. How many knows what debt means? Raise your hand if you know what debt means. Now put your hands down because I'm going to tell you it means do everything but tithe. It means do everything but tithe. Hmm. People say, well, you can't preach prosperity. I don't preach prosperity, but I don't serve a God of poverty. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody, I ought to get an amen from the amen corner because I'm preaching on prosperity. But I don't serve a God of lacking. I don't serve a God of not enough. But I know that i got to do my part. Amen. Ushers, would you come this morning? Debt means do everything but tithe. As the increase comes, I'm believing that the, the Lord that I serve is also going to increase this house. I want y'all to begin to look around because it's not big enough. It's not big enough. Chase, it's been four months. It ain't big enough. This building's not big enough. We don't have enough chairs. It's not big enough. We're growing. So as I pray over this offering this morning, I want you to know that you are a part of the fastest growing church in this area. Amen. And it ain't because of what we're doing, but it's because we invite the Holy Spirit Amen. in this place. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning that you're here. We thank you that you are alive and well, Lord. Father, and we decree and declare this morning, Lord, that you multiply everything that we do. Father, I ask that you multiply every dime, nickel, and penny, Lord, that hits the bottom of this bucket this morning, Lord, but multiply your people. Multiply us, God. Yes. Father, we are faithful over our tithes. We know that you're going to be faithful over the increase. Yes. Father, we love you. We praise you. Somebody in this house come to worship you this morning, Lord. Let everything that have breath praise you, Lord. Father, we love you. And somebody's going to shout like they done lost their mind. Amen. Come on, now. Somebody just give them 10 seconds. Come on, somebody just take 10 seconds and praise him like your interest has already come. Come on, praise him like it's already there. Like your healings just show up. Like your turnaround just, come on, just release it into the atmosphere.
don't know about you, but if you got something going on in your life, the Bible says that he's no respect of persons. That he can heal you just like he did her. Do my song. Do my song. Do my song. Do my song. Come on, hang on a minute now. We have a church this morning. We have a church this morning. I, I want somebody to testify by the raising of your hands if you've ever been through a storm in your life. If you've been through a storm in your life, what I want you to do is make your way out of your pew and I want to crowd this altar right here. I know this is new for some folks, but just come on down here. I promise freedom feels good once you get in it. Freedom and liberty feels good. Come on. If God's ever seen you through the storm, if God's ever walked with you through the hardest times in your life, if God's ever kept you, sustained you, I want you to come down here and give him some glory. Oh, it feels good. Y'all better be careful because once you get in the realm of being uncomfortable, God moves in the realm. It was when Peter stepped out of the boat.
for everybody and everything that told me that I couldn't. For every naysayer and negative speaking person in my life. You need to tell the enemy this morning, watch this, because I just got a revelation that God's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. No matter what the enemy told you, no matter what the doctor told you, no matter what your mama and daddy told you, God's saying if you're growing bread,
twofold. I believe that blessings are twofold. The word tells us, ask, seek, and you knocking it, it shall be open. If you ask anything in my name, receive something in the spirit but now I'm just waiting on it to manifest itself somebody you want to go ahead and praise God like you just got whatever you've been waiting on it's so ready Sometimes when you feel that you're losing all grip with reality, it doesn't matter because I'm not holding on to my own life anyway. He's holding on to me. That's revelation for somebody in here this morning. Look at somebody and say, don't worry about it. He's got you. He's going to see you through. He's been... Hebrews said he never left you, nor forsake you. Proverbs says that he'll stick closer than a brother. David went to say, I've never seen the righteousness of Satan. Nor his seed. God bless you to the world. Come on, somebody. He told Moses, 
angels. He said, I'll go with you and I'll show you victory. Micah, are you there? Yes. In the seventh chapter. In the seventh verse. Excuse me, seven and five. Micah seven and five. Fear expands in the absence of faith. Faith is the opposition that refutes doubt and fear. Right, right. Faith knowing that God's got this. Come on, come on. Mm. Knowing that God is faithful, mm -hmm. no matter the circumstance, yes. right, right. no matter the situation, yeah. you're in his arms. Yes. I could preach right there this morning that no matter what you're going through, it ain't bigger than God. He said, don't worry about the world because I've already overcome it. Don't worry about what's plaguing you because greater is he that's within you than greater than he that's within the world. Amen. Sometimes we need to learn to look at the mountain and say, guess what? God's got me. I'm not worried about what comes tomorrow or next week because I know that I know that I know that I'm in the saving arms of the Savior. He's got it. We struggle with this. Micah, are you there? Yes. How many today would like to look fear in the eye? Yes. And let fear know that you no longer have dominion over my life. Yes. Oh, y'all hear what I'm preaching to you this morning. Yes. How many would like to look fear in the eye and let it know that you rebuke it and it has no more dominion or authority yes. over your life? Because I have come to realize this morning that no matter whatever the situation is, God's got it. See, we, we, we search too much to be validated by people. And we want to search through people. We want, to, we want to know that people accept us. And we want to know that people validate us. But the truth is, it don't matter who validates you, who accepts you. As long as God looks down at you and say, don't worry, but make the haters in your life because I got you. I, I wish I had somebody this morning that said, I ain't trying to appease man. I'm trying to please God this morning. Put no trust in neighbor. Mm -hmm. Put no trust in a neighbor. Have no confidence in a friend. Guard the doors of your mouth. Oh, Lord Jesus. So, from her who lies in your arms. For the son treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against the mother. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. So listen to what it says. It says in the seventh verse, and I like it, he says, But as for me, I'll close the Bible right there. See, you got to let everybody else do what they want to do. You can't be swayed by the world. You can't be swayed by the politicians. But you've got to learn at some point in time uh, to stand up on your own feet and say, as for me and my house, uh, just for 24 and 15, uh, I'm going to serve the Lord whether it looks cute uh, or whether it looks cute. Today. Huh? 
Oh, God, don't even get me started, but listen to me, y'all. I'm still going to call sin, sin, and wrong, wrong. If you was born a little boy, you still a little boy. If you was born a little girl, you still a little girl. God's gender is not fluid, neither is yours. But as for me, I know that God's got me. Mm. Listen to what he says here. He says, but as for me, I will. Mm. David said, I fix my eyes upon the hills. What does that say? I don't look toward man for my solution. I've learned that my solution comes from a higher power. I, I don't look for validation in the things I do from man because man doesn't validate you. And I've been on that for a few weeks, but I want to let you know, don't worry about what folks say about you because it does not validate who you are. Quit letting people's opinion about you become your reality. and having some type of righteousness and holiness about us and understand that God's got us. Are you with me? I like it. He says, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Mm -hmm. Rejoice not over me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I'm going to read it one more time and I'm going to let the saint chat right there. It says, don't rejoice over me oh so quick. Because when I fall, you better believe that a just man follows seven times. But you better be ready because God's got me and I'm fixing to get back up. Look at somebody and say, get on. situation that I've been in. People must not have a story to their testimony, but I know what it feels like to be laying face down in the mud, watching every hater in your life laugh at you. But I know what it feels like to feel the arm of God stretch. That's why I've been telling you, let those folks watch you in your life. Because yes, they may see you trip, but they're also going to see God come to your rescue. David said you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemy, because when I fall, I'm going to rise. Oh, I feel him in the house. Listen, some of y'all have fallen and think that it's final. Some of y'all have fallen and don't know how to get back up. But I've come this morning to tell you that he ain't done with you yet. And just the same way people watch you fall, it's the same way they're going to see you get back up. You want to stand up and say, God, I thank you that you never left me, that you never turned your back on me. Even when I was wrong, God, even when I was nasty, God, God. Just long enough. 
up. What the enemy meant for evil. Look at somebody and say, turnarounds come. What the enemy meant for my destruction. God turned it around. And now you watch me be elevated to a place. Look at somebody and say, he got you. Rejoice not over me. I can say, wait a minute, you better not rejoice too quick because the same way I fall, God going to pick me back. He said, rejoice not over me, over my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness. Sometimes you got to do things by yourself. Quit waiting on somebody to come and help you down there. Sometimes you got to lace up your own shoes and make a decision in your mind. Because how many of those change starts the moment I make a decision? Even though I may be all by myself and it may look like I'm in darkness, the light that shines around me, John 1 says, and the light shone and darkness did not overcome. Even though I sit in darkness, the Lord, Adonai, will be a light of the Lord. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power. Somebody say power. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Because I have sinned against him until he pleads my cause. Y'all get ready. And executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I shall look upon his vindication. Then my enemy will see. Mm, Y'all better be careful who you're talking about. Uh, I said my enemy will see. The shame will cover her who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will look upon her. Now she will be trampled down like a mire in the street. Somebody let your enemies watch you because God's got you. Yeah. Yeah. Skip over to 18. I got I to gotta get with this. Who is a God like you pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant? Y'all wonder why I call this place a remnant because Ezra, Nehemiah, Micah, they all talk about a remnant that's going to rise up in the inheritance. That know what God's given to them. That know what our God-given right is. What we are as heirs and joint heirs. A royal priesthood. Amen. The, the remnant of his inheritance, he does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast out all our sins into the depths of. Look at somebody and say, no matter where you're at, he's still got you. See, the prodigal son was in the pig pen. When the Bible says that he came to himself. But the Bible says that no man can come to the Lord unless he be drawn by the Spirit. So in the middle of the thing that was unclean, the Spirit began to draw the prodigal son. I wish I had a help this time. But what I'm telling you is you in a place that ain't too nasty for him. Just let the Spirit begin to draw you. Wherever you at, he's got you. In the middle of the whorehouse, he's got you. In the middle of the crack house, he's got you. In the middle of addiction, he's still got you. God told Hosea, he said, your wife is in a house 
of idolatry and harlots. But I still got her. See, our position does not affect his unconditional love for us. And people here, I, I want you to go to Genesis 15. Don't let me die back there. I'm fixing to show y'all something. That's one of the most powerful revelations that you can ever understand in the Word of God. And I want to show you why He's got you. Why? Have you ever wondered in your life, God, I'm so nasty, I've done so many wrong things. I'm a wretch. I'm kind of like Paul. I'm a chief among sinners, God. I'm the least of all things. Why do you care so much for me? I'm fixing to show it to you in Genesis 15. Are you there? Yeah. Let me go. Let me catch up with you. I'm not going to keep you much longer. I'm fixing to close, but i got to give you this. But why, why, why does God got you? Because, Lord, I can point you all out. Matt, Christy, none of y'all, Justin, let me tell you, none of you, and myself included, is worthy of him having us. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you understand that, right? That's right. Come on. Don't think that you have done something. That validates you, that promotes you Come to on. be in, in relationship with the King. Come on. Come on. It ain't your works. But Genesis gives us a look at the love that a father has for his people. One of my favorite stories, Genesis 15 over there. 15 and 1. Abraham just come back from war, from rescuing Lot, who was hard-headed and didn't want to listen. And he was worried. And in 15 and 1, after these things, the word mm, of the Lord came to Abram in a vision and said, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I like the Old Testament in the King James, your exceedingly great reward. Jump over now to... 12th verse. But as the sun was going down, a deep sleep yeah. fell on Abel. And behold, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring will sojourn in a land that is not theirs, and will be servants there. And they will be afflicted 400 years. But I but denotes a pivotal episode, which means that the narrative is fixing to change. Ooh. He says, you're going to be a slave for 400 years, but I, I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve. And afterwards, they shall come out with Should I preach that? I should preach that? That you may have went in broke, but you fixing to come out blessed. I went into the storm wounding, but I come out blessed. I went into the trials wondering, but I come out knowing. I went in unsure, but now I'm sure. Because that's how it got. Where sin did abound. Grace abounded all the more. Slave you for 400 years, but when you come out, you're going to have great possessions. And guess what? It's going to be the things of those that enslave you. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. They shall come out with great possessions, for as you, you shall go to your fathers in peace, you shall be buried in a good age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation when the iniquities of the Amorites is not yet complete. But listen, here we go. Are y'all ready for this? When the land, when the sun had gone down and it was dark. Behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch. Amen. See, now, we were just talking about the Exodus, and the Bible says that when the children of Israel left the land of Egypt, it was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But when the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. Amen. Now, let me preach to you just shortly. Abram had wondered, he said, God, where is my inheritance? A servant 
will be my heir because I have no son. And God said, Abram, at this time, Abraham, Abram, I want you to go get a cow and a goat and all these animals and I want you to cut them in half. Yeah. And what this was was a Canaanite ritual of covenant. I need some folks. I need some folks. Look here. This is one of the animals. So they would cut them in half. Give me a Bible. Stand up if you can't see. Stand up if you can't see. Because y'all got to see this. I do got this stuff. Come on, can I? Oh, Michael Kors. Come here, Michael. Michael Chalamet. You might open that thing up. There'll be a check in there for about $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> God of 
still yes and they're still amen. And the promise that he made to Abram has not expired. It has not gone sour, but it is good for the day. Yes. 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 He said, as I was asleep, the only thing that God told me, oh,
about that thing that keeps you up at night. Remember, I said faith is expanded in the absence. I mean, fear is expanded in the absence of faith, which we can twist. That fear is decreased when faith is expanded. So here's my humble cry this this morning. As Layton comes and picks up the sacrificial animals on the ground.
start your new life today and claim victory, would you come? Would you come? Give the Lord a hand in this place. Some that may not be here, but when I call your name, I ask that you just come on.